picked myself up one of these Apex Neos. I got a fantastic deal on it. I found a guy on Facebook Marketplace selling this brand new for 275 bucks. So this is what you're going to need to tune a vehicle like the Lexus GS400. We don't have much in terms of timing adjustment on this because, well, it doesn't adjust any timing. But it does adjust the air and fuel going to your engine and that is what you are going to need to get some more power out of this car. My goal is to walk you through the steps you're going to need to install it in a vehicle like this. So thanks for joining me. Be sure to smash that subscribe button before I forget and you won't miss another episode. This is what a brand new kit will consist of. Obviously a box. This actually happens to be a JDM version that this uh, gentleman I bought it from had, so it's all Japanese. Um, but that's okay, because all their instructions are available online, thankfully. The Apex e Neo controller itself and the wiring harness that will plug into the back of it, and you'll be running a lot of these wires to your ECU, and some of them will not be running to the ECU. Don't be intimidated by the wiring. It's, it's not gonna be that bad. I'm gonna walk you through all the steps. These are the general tools and supplies that you're gonna need to do the job correctly. One thing that stands out is this pretty cool box of 22 gauge wire, I believe it is. It has different colors that you can see and it was very reasonable on Amazon. And we have some heat shrink, some protective tubing, soldering iron of course, electrical tape, a very sharp blade on an X-Acto knife, and wire cutters. But here's the good news. I zip tied to the side the wiring that is not needed for this install. So on the Lexus GS400, you're not going to need these wires. Now be sure to follow the Apex e Neo instructions, which I have pulled up here on my computer. However, this really narrows it down. You're only going to run four wires to the ECM, which is under the hood of the vehicle. Your ECU or ECM, however you want to say it, sits in this box right here. First thing you're obviously going to need to do is figure out where you want the Apex e Neo to be. I think that it's better if it's kind of hidden so that you don't get it stolen possibly, but you also want it to be in view for tuning purposes. What I'm thinking is a lot of people put it in the ashtray and they actually cut out the ashtray and it fits in there real nice and then you can stow it. But as you can see, I kind of utilize the ashtray a bit. I like to have access to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the glove compartment. I'm gonna need approximately six feet of black 22 gauge wire. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that one. I'm gonna do it twice. I'll go ahead and strip these and get the connection soldered on. Don't forget your heat shrink. You always want to put that on first. And we take the connector like this, and I'll go ahead and clamp that down, and then I'll solder it up. I actually made a decision to utilize those two Phillips head locations for the ground. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this and I'm gonna run it right up to where the Apex e Neo will be located. I made the decision to utilize the 12 volt socket power and it's gonna be your pink once again. So what you're gonna do is carefully strip this protective cover, not all the way, but as far as you need to so that you can expose the wire for splicing purposes. This is one of those grabber tools. When you squeeze it, this little hand opens right down here. I'll show you. So hopefully I can grab a hold of the wiring and pull it up through and have it available for the Apex e Neo right up in this pocket. 
check that out guys it worked Now that I've established the access point, I can build up a four wire harness on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up this harness. All right guys, I'm running my custom harness to the Apexi Neo inside of this protective tubing. And this is what I'm gonna run through the firewall. You need to be very careful when you push anything sharp through this firewall hole because there are wiring there are wires on the other side but here's the idea I'm gonna try to focus on it and see if you can see this I'm gonna get a hold of this screwdriver I'm gonna pull it back that way to create an opening once again this really cool tool paid off so I shoved that through the firewall and then I had my wife actually push the thumb button here to open that up and it pulled, what we did was we pulled this wiring through. Here's a quick look at the inside of the vehicle where it comes through. Right there. See that? How cool is that? I have a little extra, but hey, it's far better than being short, right? So I have everything kind of shrink wrapped, all clean and nice. And I'm gonna do some electrical tape over the top of it and then everything will be wired up and ready to go. Since you're going to be working with the ECU, I'm going to go ahead and pull off that negative battery cable. So it's going to go right in there and we're going to start tapping into some of these connections. On the Apexi site, I'm going to use the T10E pinout. So let's focus on the 24 pin connection first. I'll show you which one that is. That is the one I have disconnected here. This one. The best thing to do is to slice this tape that's holding together these wires so you have a better way to see where the pins are. Be really careful doing this. I'm just going to try to get this tape freed up. math signal which is the red and blue wire on the GS400 uh, on the 24 pin connector and it's listed on the T10-E wire setup on uh, the Apexi USA instructions so this is the only one we're gonna actually cut here we go Okay, ready to piggyback. We'll start with that one and then we'll work our way to the other wires. I'm tapping the math output wire with my yellow. Your color may vary depending on what, what color wires you use. But <clears throat> soldering is always best. And I also, you'll notice I put a little towel under there. I just don't want some solder splatter to go flying into one of the wires or open pins on the ECU. E5 connector 
and it's kind of like playing Battleship. On the second row, you're going to go four in. Four in is a black and yellow wire. So it's right here. And all we're doing is we're splicing into it. We're not cutting it. It would be considered pin 16 on the pinout of E5, which should be black and yellow. So a black with yellow stripe. And that is correct. The red wire with a black stripe, splice it into this correct TPS wire right here. Go ahead and make a spot here for the wire harness to come through. And the idea would be to run that right through there, like so. You're also going to have to cut the lid, so make sure you mark the lid. Otherwise, you'll sever that wire. Make sure there's no sharp edges in there, nothing too crazy anyway. Let's see if that did the trick. Yep, I think that did the trick. So this is the routing. You can see it going all the way up right into the firewall there. Okay, I have the Neo all hooked up, and now what you want to do is put your negative cable back on your battery, turn your key to the accessory position. Do not start the car. It's all plugged in. Accessory position. Good so far. Okay. Once you get your Apex and Neo all wired up, I want to walk you through the steps to get it properly set so that you don't just fire up your car and have a bunch of problems. First thing you need to do is set your key to the accessory position. Low voltage. The Bluetooth device. So you'll see the main menu when you first boot it up. First thing you need to do is go down to etc and hit enter. This is your enter button. This is your previous button. And then these are your select buttons. Once that's highlighted, I'm going to hit enter. And you're basically going to go all the way to the top if it's not already there. Model select. Okay. So you just start there. Enter. And this would be where you adjust whether or not you have VTEC. And in the case of my car, I do not have VTEC. So it shows VTEC off, which is great. I'm actually going to back out of this menu because it's already correct. I'm going to go down to mode select and hit enter. I have it on easy for now just to make things simple. This is how you tune the vehicle, so don't worry about that. Previous, car select, down, enter. This is where it's a little tricky. At first I had this set to eight cylinder, which makes sense because I have an eight cylinder. However, the RPM readings on the display were half what they should have been. Upon reading online a bit, I discovered that the Neo treats a V8 engine kind of like one bank and another bank. So if you put it on four cylinder, it will behave properly. So put it on four cylinder. And then when you go into this throttle setting here, you're going to need to turn the ignition key to the on position. Okay, so hit enter. Now, what it's saying is, is please put the throttle to close, but I don't have the ignition key to the on position. So it, when I turn it to the on position, you're going to see voltage show up. See how the voltage showed up? Okay. Yes. The throttle is closed. I don't have my foot on it at all. Please put it to full open, full open, enter. Hey, it worked. Okay. Now, okay, I'm going to go to accessory position once again, so my car is quiet. I'm going to back out of this menu. Let's go to sensor select, enter. We have a hot wire sensor type for the MAF. 
When you hit enter, set it to two in, two out. Okay, so I'm gonna back out of there because it's correct. All right, I'm gonna back out of there because I'm on hot wire. Now I'm gonna go down. Analog scale. What range do you want your RPM and etc. to be? So let's hit enter. I have it set at six, or excuse me, 8,000. Now, if you were to hit this button, it goes to six or eight. That's all you have to choose from. Now, because this car will bounce off the rev limiter around 6,400 RPM, I'm gonna set it at 8,000 RPM. I'm gonna leave that alone, back out, go down. Warning, do you want to have an RPM warning or a throttle position warning? Yeah, I have mine set at 6,100 RPM. When you hit the designated RPM on this, it starts flashing. So that's kind of a cool thing. This is an air fuel warning and I'm not gonna use that cause that's not even hooked up to my air fuel uh, meter and then throttle position warning. Okay, previous. Now I'm gonna go down, display set. This is if you wanna change the colors of the Neo. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can go in there and fiddle with it. I chose the um, maroon color to match my car and uh, I stayed with blue here. All right, I'm gonna back out of that, go down, sensor check, that'll just look at the various sensors that you have wired up and make sure there's voltage. So you don't have to worry about that. Initialize would reset all your settings, you don't want that, and program version. So that's it, I'm gonna back out. Now, if you wanna go and monitor your vehicle, this is kinda of cool, so you hit enter. Uh, you can choose from digital, let's take a look at digital here. You can, let's just say one channel, go up, one channel, and RPM would display in a digital format. Now these are handy because you can set it on throttle. So I'm gonna go previous. I'm gonna to go to two channel. Let's see if throttle's on there. Yeah, throttle percentage is on there. That is handy because you can work with your high and low settings. So you can watch that meter and figure out what's going on and then fix your air maps based on your throttle position. Okay, back out of that. Three channel, enter monitors battery i don't know if you guys care about that i don't really care back out go to four channel enter now you've got a variety of settings here so find what works for you i'll do two channel for now now let me show you some other stuff go back out let's look at analog enter let's say two channel those are kind of cool you got throttle position and uh, rpm so I kind of like that display. If you do one channel, then you get your RPM, you know, your tack. So let's back out of that, back out of that. Let's go multi, let's see what we got here. Um, type A, I don't know. There you go, it's kind of cool. Let's go to type B, enter. Well, that's interesting as well. So you've got some uh, kind of cool settings in here. Depends on what you like. I might keep it on that right there. And then basically it remembers your settings. Now, if you want to adjust the air map, you go in here and you hit enter, and this is where you would start messing with your um, fuel. But I want to go to monitor first. So I'm going to leave it right on multi type A. There you go. Now when you shut off the car and then turn it back on again, it'll remember where it was. All right, guys, the Apex Neo is completely installed on the Lexus GS400. I'm ready to take it out and to street tune it. So be sure to hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss the next episode where I start to take it out and I start to try to tune it on my own. Do I have plans to run it on a dyno in the future? Yes, I do. What I wanna do first though is to try to street tune it and see how well I did when I go to the dyno. So thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.